Hills Mafia, what is good? Welcome back to another pre-game preview video. This week we have the Buffalo Bills taking on none other than the Pittsburgh Steelers. So let's get right into it. Now before we get into the problem players and the pushovers, I want to talk about some team stats. Particularly just where the teams rank the Bills, the Steelers, amongst the league in certain basic categories. Now these are via the score not sponsored, and I'm just gonna pop it up on the screen here for you guys. The Bills rank third in offensive yards per game with 422.3 per game, and the Steelers rank 31st with 290.5. And as for points per game, the Bills are fifth, scoring 28.5 points per game, and the Steelers are tied for 24th, scoring 18.5 points per game. Now for defensive stats, the Bills are allowing a league second best 257 yards per game, and the Steelers defense is giving up 24th ranking 397.5 yards per game. As for passing yards given up, the Bills are allowing 150.8 yards per game, which is good for second, once again. And the Steelers are 20th, giving up 251.5 yards a game. As for rushing yards, the Bills are third, giving up 83.8 yards per game. And the Steelers are 24th, giving up 131.5 yards a game. Points per game, the Bills are second with 14.5 allowed per game, and the Steelers are 15th with 22.5. Now let's get into some potential problem players and issues that the Bills could face this week. TJ Watt has been out since week one, for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Alex Highsmith has kind of filled that void temporarily while Watt is out. Pretty impressive for a guy like Highsmith to come and fill that void so well. I know the Steelers are missing one. This could have been a whole nother issue with Highsmith playing at this level if they had Watt as well. Thankfully Watt's still out for this game. I'm not sure if Cameron Hayward is going to play this week so Highsmith might draw a couple double team blocks when it comes down to it. If Hayward is playing, he's a guy who's also given the Bills trouble in the past but with his status up in the air, we don't know. I expect if both those guys are playing, they'll split time with double team blocks from the Bills offensive line. But for the most part, if Hayward is out, I expect Highsmith to get a lot of that. Problem player number two, we got Minka Fitzpatrick, all right? He's playing at an elite level this year. Playing absolutely lights out on the backhand for the Steelers. He has three picks in four games, only trailing yours truly, all pro po Jordan Poyer, who has four. And I'm always weary of the ball hawk safety guys. They're one of the most scary guys out on the field. Because sometimes the quarterback won't see him because he's in the blind spot and he comes in and he lurks the ball and he picks it off and he can turn it for a bunch of yards, maybe even house it. You always need to be careful of where those safeties are, especially the high level guys like Minka Fitzpatrick because they can lurk at any point and they can be hidden very well in some certain coverages. I'm sure Allen's gonna be aware looking for number 39 where wherever he is on the field, pre-snap, post-snap. Josh will have his eyes on him, and I'm sure he's going to do the best he can to not throw picks to him. And I'm sure he's part of the offensive game plan. You always game plan for those star guys. So I'm sure Ken Dorsey, Josh Allen, that entire offense has a plan to minimize the impact of Minka. But then again, when you have these star players like Minka Fitzpatrick, game planning for them doesn't always work because they're just that good that they outshine any game plan or strategy you had for them. So Bills just need to be extra careful this week and hopefully no interceptions for Josh Allen. Problem player number three, not a player, but it's the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin. He's one of the best coaches of this generation. You could argue somewhere in the top all time. I feel like he's one of those coaches that you can just never count out. He's like, Kind of up there with Bill Belichick, not on Bill Belichick's level, but never had a losing season. Granted, this season is kind of leaning that way for him. And that's okay. The Steelers are just not that good of a team. But like I said, you just can't, you can't count them out. He's got that dog in him. If you count him out, he'll say something like, we do not care. I would say it's safe to bet against Mike Tomlin and the Steelers this week, but just be careful. You know, it could be another one of those trap games like Miami. You never know what's going to happen with a team that's coached by Mike Tomlin. He's just got that dog in. Now let's talk some pushovers, all right? Pushover number one, rookie quarterback Kenny Pickett. And you might be wondering, Kenny Pickett, just as I was preparing the video, Ian Rappaport came out and said the Steelers are expected to name Kenny Pickett the starter. So I'm going in expecting that Kenny Pickett is going to be the starting quarterback for the Steelers. It's going to be his first career start. He came in at halftime for the Steelers, replacing Mitch Trubisky, former Buffalo Bills legend. And he went 10 for 13 and threw three picks, which is kind of kind of a weird stat line. Had two rushing touchdowns, Steelers lost. And I expect Pickett to struggle this week. And I'm not trying to just bring out the Homer syndrome and be like, oh, the Bills are going to win, guys. The Bills are going to kick their ass. Rookie quarterbacks usually struggle in their first game. Not everybody is going to be, not everyone's going to be Justin Herbert or even Baker Mayfield was electric in their first season. They're not, not everybody comes out as a rookie and performs. We have to 
temper expectations what we expect him to come out here and do. Granted, he could come out on Sunday and be phenomenal, all right? He could be one of the best quarterbacks in the league already. Who knows? But oftentimes, especially with the Bills defense, they're gonna throw some uh, disguised coverages at him, mess with his head, get the pressure, and force him to make mistakes, and I think I think he will. Now it's time for pushover number two, and I got running back Najee Harris. I've never really been high on Najee Harris. I don't know how other people feel about him. Well, he's never been a really efficient runner. He gets a lot of volume, a lot of carries, a lot of touches. His career average is below four yards to carry, which is absolutely abysmal. Even this season, it's quite abysmal. He started off even worse than what he is now. I do think Najee Harris has that ability to run over a defense, which leads me to my next pushover, which is the entire Steelers offensive line. They're just not that great. Right now, they're currently in the middle of the pack for sacks allowed and whatever, but it really comes down to the eye test and what I see as they're just not that good. They haven't really been that good for a while. It's been a real big weakness of the Steelers. If the Steelers had a better O-line and Najee Harris was still getting the volume of carries that he was getting, I would expect them to be Offensive Player of the Year. Like, they just can't run block, they can't pass, they can't really do anything. It might, honestly, other than quarterback, be the Achilles heel of their team. Quarterback and offensive line are their biggest weaknesses. Hopefully in the offseason they can get that figured out and the Steelers can be better off next year. I'm really expecting the Bills defense to feast on all three of these guys, Kenny Pickett, Najee Harris, the Steelers offensive line. I expect the defense to have a day. Hopefully I'm right because I'm going to be at the game in person. So this week there will be no live reaction, but there will be a vlog. So stay tuned for that. Now let's talk some offensive expectations. I expect a really modest game from the Bills. I don't expect anything too flashy, too crazy. I expect our offensive line to get worked quite a bit by the Steelers D-line. I expect Allen to get pressured quite a bit as well. He could end up throwing a pick too with all the pressure in his face. He could make a mistake. We're, I think we're gonna see the Allen we all know and love a good efficient effective game but nothing too flashy nothing too wild to blow your mind you know hopefully we do because i'm seeing the game in person but you know i just want to win i just want to win all the games i expect the run game to get abandoned pretty early on if they can't get it going because usually they can't so just like throw it out the window like they always do but this game starts to become a blowout for the bills you'll see them run the ball a lot more even if it's not that efficient because they just want to kill clock at that point when you throw an incompletion it stops the clock right so now defensive expectations i think the defense once once again, it's going to eat and feast on Kenny Pickett and this entire Steelers offense. I've already been through that, so I don't need to get too much into it. It's really going to help out the Bills offense, which is going to give them short field position because I think they're going to force a lot of turnovers. Hopefully a couple interceptions and a fumble, something fun. You know, I want to see lots of fun stuff at this game. We have Trey White is eligible to return this week, but we have no idea if he is going to return because he's still on the pup list and they might be waiting for Kansas City or even after the bye when they play Green Bay. In his place, though, Kyer Elam has been absolute lockdown. He might have a shot at Defensive Rookie of the Year this year. Hopefully he can rack up a couple interceptions and passes defended and... He's going to have a real chance because he's been absolutely locked down otherwise. Now for a stat line prediction, I have... Josh Allen going 25 for 34, 231 yards, three touchdowns, and zero picks. Like I said, kind of modest. Still got a few touchdowns. He's going to keep himself in that MVP race, and he's going to help the Bills win this game. Now, as for a score prediction, I have 34 to 13 Buffalo. I think Steelers will get a touchdown and a couple field goals, but nothing really more than that. Lots of turnovers are going to cost them, and they're going to leave a lot of points out on the field. That's going to be it for this video, Bills Mafia. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and in the comments down below, leave your score predictions, leave your stat line predictions, leave your any predictions for this game. On your way out, please subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and I would greatly appreciate it. We're on the road to 100 subscribers. We're almost there. We're so close, and hopefully the Mafia can help me get there. That's all I have for you today, and as a wise man once said, Go Bills.